In this video, we review how to use Azure Private DNS Zones and Private Endpoints for Azure File Shares. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Reltos and welcome to an update to a previous video on Private Endpoints and DNS. In the last video, we left off with creating a private link.file.core.windows.net forward lookup zone on internal DNS servers to resolve private endpoint IPs across multiple VNets. That works, but has a flaw. We have to manually add the endpoints to DNS. This may work fine for small and medium-sized organizations, but would be unmanageable for large organizations or any with a lot of private endpoints. We're going to review another option using private DNS zones in this video. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Hybrid Identities with Azure AD on Udemy.com. The option for name resolution I'm presenting in this video is a bit more complex than the others, but it has the advantage of not having to manually update DNS. The goal is to resolve the DNS name for private endpoints from any location on our internal network without having to update DNS. Let's review private endpoints and DNS quick before we set up the solution. This example will use three subscriptions, each with a VNet and a storage account attached to that VNet. By default, we can resolve the private endpoints attached to each VNet from that VNet with the wire server IP address. The wire server IP is a special IP address that services in Azure interact with. It's a public IP address only available from Azure that provides services such as DHCP and DNS. The wire server IP is VNet specific for DNS. We can't resolve storage account names attached to other VNets. In the last video, we added the private link.file.core.windows.net forward lookup zone to the internal DNS. That worked, but we had to manually add the host names to DNS for each storage account. Not a scalable solution for organizations with a lot of private endpoints. In this video, we use private DNS zones in Azure to create a DNS hub. The private endpoints in the spokes will update DNS information to this hub zone. From there, we'll configure a forwarder server on the VNet that will query the wire server IP address. Our internal DNS servers use conditional forwarding to send requests for the file.core.windows.net domain to that server, resolving storage accounts with a private endpoint to the internal IP address. A few things to know about the demo coming up. We use three subscriptions and VNets with a storage account attached to each. The first two storage accounts are configured. We'll walk through setting up the third one in this video. A Windows server is in place on the DNS hub VNet with the DNS services installed. This is a forwarder server. I used a Windows DNS server for this example. You could use any DNS server as your forwarder, Linux with Bind, for example. Coming up, we're going to review the private DNS zones, update the storage account DNS configuration to create a hub and spoke DNS setup, and enable conditional forwarding on our internal servers. Let's jump into the portal to get started. Let's start by creating a storage account with a private endpoint. There will be three of these in total, one for each VNet. We'll walk through setting up the third. The first two have already been created. Let's go to create a resource and select storage account. We'll select the subscription. Each of these storage accounts are in a different subscription. We'll create a new resource group and give the storage account a name. We'll set the region, central US for this example. We'll change it to LRS. Now go to networking and select private endpoint. We'll add a private endpoint. Be sure the correct subscription is selected and create a new resource group. It can be the same name as the resource group for the storage account. We'll give the endpoint a name. We'll set it as the storage account with PEP at the end. Set the sub resource to file. You would need to repeat these steps if you wanted to do the same for a blob table and other sub resource types. Select the VNet and subnet and integrate it with private DNS. Notice the private DNS zone is new for this example. This is the first private endpoint we're configuring in this VNet. Click OK and review and create. Click Create, and I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That took a couple minutes, but it's finished. 
Now that it's done, let's review how DNS is working so far. We're going to go to a server in VNet0. This server is in a different VNet from where we deployed the storage account. Let's run NSLOOKUP against that storage account to see what happens. It can't resolve the private endpoint we just set up. Notice we're using the wire server IP as the name resolution server, not internal DNS. If we go to another server that's on the same VNet as the storage account we just set up, I know these all look the same, but trust me, I am moving between different computers. You can tell by the IP address on the RDP bar. Let's run that command again. Well, we're on the same VNet as where the storage account was deployed to, it will resolve. And remember that wire server IP only knows about the servers that are attached to the VNet that it's on. Let's look at things another way. We're going to go back to the Azure portal. Here we're in private DNS zones. We now have three private link.file.core.windows.net domains. And if we go into each one, it has an entry for the private endpoint we added, but only for the endpoints on that VNet. We'll go to the next one. And the third one. So those are the private endpoints for the three storage accounts on three different VNets. That's why the wire server can only resolve the local attached private endpoints. Let's fix that next. Next, we're going to create a private endpoint DNS hub in one of these private link DNS zones. We can't cross replicate host names between the three zones. We can only send host name information to one of these. We'll call that the private DNS zone hub or just DNS hub. This example will use the private DNS zone in the sponsorship subscription attached to VNet03. The DNS zone really is arbitrary, but we'll need to stick with one once it's selected. And also, if you're paying close attention, you'll notice my resource group names, VNet names, maybe don't make a lot of sense. There wasn't a lot of planning involved when I created these. This is the best example though that I had on hand. Let's go into the private DNS zone we'll use for the hub. Our hub DNS has the local storage account CIR DNS test 2 already. We need to get the other two storage accounts to add host information into this private DNS zone. To do that, we'll start up by going to one of the other storage accounts, CIR DNS test 1 for this example. We'll go to networking, private endpoint connections, select our private endpoint, DNS configuration, and from here, we'll add a configuration. Select the subscription of the hub private zone. So for this example, it was sponsorship. Select the private DNS zone. Private link.file.core.windows.net. Leave the zone group to default. And we can leave the configuration name and click add. Notice now under configuration name, we have the fully qualified domain name within the hub subscription for that private DNS zone. Let's repeat these steps for the other spoke in our private DNS hub, the CIR DNS test three storage account. Here we are, we'll go to networking, private endpoints, select the private endpoint, DNS configuration and add configuration. Select the sponsorship subscription, our private DNS zone and click add. That finished. Now let's go back to private DNS zones. Our private DNS for pay as you go. That only has one, the local storage account. And for WVD, same thing. But if we go to the sponsorship subscription, notice we have all three private endpoint host names in that zone. Let's verify it works by going to a server in that VNet in the sponsorship subscription and run NSLOOKUP against the wire server IP. So that was the 10.10 network. So CIR DNS test one resolves. That's good. Two shouldn't have any problem. That was in there already. And what about three? That works too. The wire server IP for this DNS hub can now resolve our private endpoints. Let's configure our internal DNS to use it. We'll use conditional forwarders to forward any request for 
file.core.windows.net to a DNS server on VNet03. That's the private DNS all of our endpoints are configured on. First, we'll set up the DNS forward server. When any client requests a name resolution for file.core.windows.net, our internal DNS will forward the request to this server. In production, I suggest using multiple DNS servers for redundancy. Also, you don't need to use Windows. You could use a bind server if you're familiar with configuring bind. The advantage there is it may be cheaper to use a Linux-based OS. This server is not domain joined. It's just a standalone server that has the DNS service running on it. I did set the private IP address to static in the Azure network interface settings. We'll need that later. From the server, open up DNS. Again, this is not our internal Windows AD DNS. This is a standalone DNS server. In DNS, right click on the server and go to properties. Go to forwarders and click edit. And for the forwarding servers, we're going to add the wire server IP address. Click OK and apply and OK. Next, we'll go to the network interface on the VM. Go to the properties of the interface and open up IPv4 properties. You should never change the IP address on an Azure VM to static. Instead, modify the virtual interface in Azure and set it to static. That way, Azure knows what server it's communicating with. You can override the DNS server address, however. The default for the subnet this is attached to is the Windows DNS. But I want this to use the local DNS server to resolve domain names. So here I'll update it with its own IP address. Now I already set this, and changing the network adapter will drop the RDP connection. It may come back in a minute or two. If you change the IP address and run into an issue where you can't connect to the machine afterwards, try restarting the VM. I already changed this, so I'll cancel out. So this server is attached to that DNS hub VNet, and because it's using itself for DNS name resolution, it should be able to resolve any of those private endpoints we configured in the DNS hub. Let's test that by running nslookup next. Here we'll run nslookup for CIR DNS test one. And that resolved, let's try two. And we'll try three. That all looks good. It's resolving to the private IP address. Notice also we didn't add the wire server IP into the nslookup command, so it used the default settings for the server, which is itself. Next, we need to tell Windows DNS to use the forwarder server. To do that, we're going to open up a Windows domain controller. Here we are on a domain controller, and we have Windows DNS open. And again, this is Windows DNS integrated into Windows AD. So all those VNets are using a replica of this DNS to resolve names. First, if you followed along on my previous videos, we need to remove the private link.file.core.windows.net domain. What we're putting in place will replace this configuration, and we don't want the too confusing name resolution. We'll delete that zone. Yes, we do. Now go to Conditional Forwarders, New Conditional Forwarder. Add the domain. This is the public DNS host name, not the private link domain. For file shares, it's file.core.windows.net. If you're setting this up for a different or additional private endpoints, Azure SQL, for example, you'll need to create a new conditional forwarder for that as well. Next, add the IP address for the forward server, 10.10.0.13 for this example. If you had multiple servers for high availability, add each. Notice the red circle. This is because the DNS server is trying to do a reverse resolution to validate the server, but that fails because there's no pointer records populated on the server. For this example, we can ignore that. Make sure it's set to store and replicate the information in AD. We want all of our internal Windows servers to have this information. And click OK. Make sure those changes are replicated, and we should be able to do an NS lookup for any of those storage accounts from any computer that uses our domain DNS. Here we are on a server in the first spoke of our hub and spoke configuration. We'll run NS lookup against CIR test one. 
And this is using the default DNS. We're not specifying the wire server anymore. That can resolve that one. Let's try two. And three. They all return the private IP address, so that's good. Let's go on to server in the other spoke. This is on VNet1. That resolves. We'll try two. And three. That's good. Now our internal Windows DNS servers are forwarding all requests for the file.core.windows.net domain to the forwarding server. That's using the wire server IP address on the hub in our hub and spoke for DNS to resolve those names. Something else to point out, if we do an NS lookup for a storage account that doesn't have private endpoints, I'm just going to grab this one randomly. It still returns the public IP address. So if you're referencing storage accounts that don't have private endpoints, it will continue to function normally. That's how you create the hub and spoke DNS with private DNS zones and use conditional forwarding for name resolution. So why do we need the extra DNS server? Why not just forward all requests to the wire server IP? Let's say we had Windows DNS set up for our on-premises network and two VNets in Azure. One of them is the DNS hub. If we simply set Windows DNS to forward a request for file.core.windows.net to the wire server IP, requests from on-premises servers would fail. The wire server IP is only available from the Azure VNet. Also, VNet0 would be able to resolve host on that VNet, but not from other VNets. Only DNS queries from VNet3 would be able to resolve all of the private endpoints. By using a forwarder on the DNS hub, all private endpoints configured to use the hub will be resolved. I hope this helps you better understand the options for private DNS zones and private endpoints. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.